All right, so anyway, here's our, this is our avocado ginger dressing. And the ginger is fairly well, it's well pulverized. You can see that there's no large chunks of ginger. See that? No large chunks of ginger in there. It's nice and small, so the flavor will be really evenly distributed, and you won't have a large, annoying chunk of ginger in your mouth. Okay, so I take a little of this, just spread it on the top, right there. Okay, and it's basically um, almost like a um, like a chip and dip, like a multicultural guacamole and chips. It isn't, but it's kind of like that. Okay, now if you have a, a nice looking top to your to your fennel, you can place that in there. Also, what I like to do with this, I have a nice ripe jalapeno, and I like to add a little bit of heat to things, you know? So what I'll do is I just take a little bit of jalapeno, put that here and uh, it's more or less optional heat you can eat the jalapenos if you like get a little get your pores open get a little perspiration so that you cool off or not you can take a little bit of the apple cider vinegar and just pour a few drops around on your hickma that adds a nice uh, a nice little tartness and a little bit of interest to your salad. So, okay, we have this, and this is our fennel jicama salad with ginger avocado, I call it dressing. Uh, if you want, you can make it a little thinner, add a little bit of um, water, maybe a little bit of apple juice to thin it out and add an interesting flavor. So, here you are. We're all done with that salad. Very easy, very quick. So, in a second, I'll be back, and uh, we'll continue. Okay, the next thing I want to do is very simple, a simple salad with plum tomatoes, yellow squash, and I an, uh, picked up uh, at the Italian deli in Denver, um, I picked up an aged provolone, which has a very sharp taste, uh, different than the... Uh, the common grocery store provolone cheeses. So uh, what I want to do is take two or three of these plum tomatoes and just slice them crosswise. Get a nice, maybe a, a quarter inch slice, okay? And I'll just do two of them, I think. All right, get some nice round slices. Okay, and I'll put them in this bowl, and I have a fairly wide bottom bowl here, so I want to spread them out so that, oh, I don't want the ends, okay, so that they just aren't laying on top of one another, okay. I take a yellow squash, this one looks really nice, cut the ends off, okay, I don't need to, don't need to peel this, I do need to wash it though, which I already, I already have done that, okay, so I make slices of this, about the same, quarter inch or so. Okay, I'll put these in the bowl also. Okay, and I'll take a little sprinkling of salt. Not a lot, maybe a quarter teaspoon or so for this much. Let's put a little salt over that. A little bit of red wine vinegar, okay? Just enough to moisten this without making it too terribly sour. Okay, and I'll take just a little bit of sugar, just a tiny bit. The sugar adds not so much a, a sweetness. Uh, it should be like an undertaste of sugar, not a real... Uh, anyway, just a little bit to add a little contrast to the cheese. It actually helps to bring the flavor of the cheese out. And I have some fresh basil, okay? It's doing well in my garden now. So I take... Take some basil, pull the leaves off, leave the stems behind, okay, uh, maybe, uh, 
get about eight nice fat leaves. With basil, you want to be careful not to crush the leaves. Okay, when you chop basil, chop it up, but be gentle with it. Okay, what the French call it a chiffonade. It's what you want to make with the basil. You want to be careful with it because the flavor of basil is, is delicate. Okay, you go and you mash the basil, you, you, you really destroy the flavor. Okay, so be gentle with it and you'll be rewarded with a nice, nice flavor. Okay, so I chop this pretty coarsely. All right. And then I sprinkle the basil into the bowl. All right, so this is what we have here. Now I'm just going to let this sit a couple of minutes. And I can take a little tiny bit of red wine vinegar to moisten the basil, OK? And I'll come back to that in just a second. Clean this. Let's get this cleaned up here. And now I want to make. A slice of cheese. Okay, this cheese um, is a little bit, has a tendency to be a little bit crumbly. So to get a nice slice can sometimes be tricky. You may have a piece that falls apart, like this one, you know, no, actually, it's holding up. Okay, it's doing pretty well. So I grab a plate. Okay, what I want to do is create. I can stir these, stir these to mix all the salt and the sugar and everything, okay? You want to be careful not to smash the tomato slices because with this salad, a lot of it is presentation. It has tremendous flavor, but a lot of it also is, depends on the, on the presentation. So what I like to do is arrange all of these, the sliced cheese, Sliced tomato, a little bit of squash, and just that go around and around on this to get a uh, more or less stunning effect. Okay, so squash, cheese, tomato, and finally we'll end with the squash. It comes out perfectly even and I'll take and put the rest in the center okay now what I want to do is take this little bit of juice that's left and the basil leaves okay and just pour them right over the top drain have the little bit of this juice right in here and this is one thing I get a, a basil garnish. Okay, with the color contrast, you end up with a beautiful salad, but also the flavors. The squash is a neutral flavor. Okay, the tomato has a little bit of tartness, sometimes a little bit of sweetness in there, and the cheese has a lot of, uh, with this aged provolone, it's very tangy. Okay, and the little bit of sugar, salt, vinegar, and the basil, it all comes out. This is very refreshing and it's very good if you have a, a French bread or an Italian bread with this a little bit of olive oil this is also very low in fat um, so this is a this is a marvelous summer dish it's a wonderful thing and it looks beautiful okay